This next one, um, we could use different functions. We could count how many months we're talking about. But the fact is, over on the left-hand side, we've got all those numbers. And we, when we scroll down, we know we go all the way down to 429. So we really know there are 428 months. Now remember, the, the first line doesn't count because that wasn't actually a month. So it was 428 months. And so to calculate this, we can just do 428 minus the months that were had an unemployment level below 5% and also subtract out the months that had an unemployment level above 10%. And that will give us everything left that was between 5 and 10%. All right, the next instruction says for every month starting in, Feb uh, in February 1976, create a column that shows if there was an increase or decrease in employment from the previous month. The reason we have to start in February of 76 is because we don't really know if there was an increase or a decrease um, in January of 76 because I don't know what the employment level was in December of 1975. So I'm going to create this column and I'm going to call it increase or decrease. I'm going to try type it correctly here. Um, oh, and I put a question mark there instead of a slash, so let me fix that. And then let me readjust the size here. And when I look at the data, I see that the unemployment level went from 10 down to 9.9% from January to February of 76. Because the unemployment went down, employment conversely went up. So if unemployment goes down, then we must have seen an increase in employment. So like I said, if employment from the previous month, so I'm using this if function, if employment from the previous month was greater, unemployment was greater in the previous month than it is now, then if that's true, so I notice I'm now onto this value of true, I want it to display an increase. So that tells me it was an increase in um, employment. If that's false, there still are two cases. It could be that employment didn't change or that employment went down. So I really need a second if function. And my logical test, so I'm going to say if uh, the employment in the previous month equals the employment in this current month, then there really was no change in employment. And lastly then, again notice I have a comma between each of these arguments and I have those quotation marks around the words that I want to display. All of this syntax stuff is very, very important. If you mess something up on the syntax, it's likely you're going to get an error message or it's just not going to display what you want it to. But anyway, so if, if the previous month uh, did not have higher unemployment and it did not have equal unemployment, well, the only thing less left then is that it had a less, lesser, uh, lesser unemployment, and so if there was now an increase in unemployment, that means there was a decrease in employment levels. I'm going to make sure to put my parentheses around the end. If you forget that, Excel should be able to fix that for you. And so now it displays that I had an increase from January of 76 to February of 76. And if I grab that corner, drag it all the way down, it'll fill it in for all of these. And you can notice, like, for instance, from August 09 to September 09, there was no change. So no change displayed. All right. Now that we've created that column, it enables us to answer these next couple questions. How many months saw an increase in employment? So again, we're trying to count how many times do we see the word increase over here. So again, we're back to our count if, and our range this time we're in column C, so I'm going to go C2 to C, oops, C429. And the criteria, I'm looking for it saying the word increase. And there were 181 months that saw an increase in employment. And conversely, we can do a count if and see if there was 
a, how many months there was a decrease in employment. So again, C2 to C429, and my criteria is decrease. And there were 128 months that saw a decrease. All right, one more column that we want to create, and that is the percent change. Percent change, and this is really not as complicated as maybe it sounds. If we saw in January of 76 it was 10 percent, and in February of 76 it's 9.9 percent, .9%. well then our percent change was 0.1, and we figured that out simply by subtracting 9.9 .9 from 10. So we did B2 minus B3, and again we can grab that corner, drag that formula down, and it will fill in what the percent change was. And what this enabled us to do now is look at what was the highest increase in employment and biggest decrease. So we can see how quickly did uh, employment, uh, the employment rate change. Were there any months where there was really dramatic employment rate change? So again, we're going to look for a max. In this case, we're looking for the largest increase and our increases are all positive. So from D2 to D429. And that was 0.7%. And our biggest uh, decre decrease, in other words, what was our minimum? What was our smallest, our biggest negative? Because um, obviously a bigger negative number is, is smaller. Hopefully you remember that from your math classes. Uh, D2 to D429, and the biggest decrease then, as we can see, was negative 0.9%. Alright, last thing that we want to do is create a scatter plot of the data. So we are going to grab all the data we want, starting, we just really want the date and the unemployment rate. We're going to insert a scatter plot. And it creates this nice scatter plot. And I don't really need this label here. It's kind of redundant because it's on the top of my graph. But notice how my dates start in January of 1900 and go all the way to November of 2036. Uh, in this case, we have a problem. Excel doesn't really know how to handle those dates terribly well. It kind of does, but it didn't realize that we really wanted to start over here in, in uh, 76. So if we right-click on the horizontal axis, we can actually format that axis, and we can change the minimum value of that axis. Right now it's at zero. But this, of course, begs the question, what does zero mean? Well, apparently in Microsoft Excel here, zero means January 1st, 1900. So one would probably equal January 2nd, 1900, and two would equal January 3rd, 1900. And that really doesn't help us. So you can see if I put in 365, all that changed was instead of starting at January, we're now starting at the very end of the end of the year, at December of uh, 1900. So what we really need to do is put in a fairly large number. I'm going to click on the right thing there uh, and format the axis again. And for this one, it, it, the number 27,000 does a sufficiently good job. So if I put 27,000 in, we're in December of 73. That's fairly close to the beginning of uh, our data set. So that shows the data pretty nicely now. Um, if we want to make it a little bit bigger, stretch it out a little bit further, it might display a little bit nicer for us exactly what's happening with unemployment. But now we get a nice picture of what has happened in terms of unemployment in Michigan. We see that it got really high in the early 80s, it got pretty low during the 90s, um, and then it popped up again in 2008, 2009, and lately it's been coming down, although we've seen it go up just a little bit again. And so the last question then was, now that we have this graph, you know, where do we expect un unemployment to go in the future? And there's no right or wrong answer here. Um, I just really wanted you to see the graph and see how we could use that information to make some predictions about the future.